President Trump's staggering announcement that he tested positive for the coronavirus has the potential for throwing an already contentious election into further disarray. Joining me on The Morning Show, former Jacksonville City Chief of Staff Chris Hand to offer analysis. Well, Chris, a month to go until the election and the president and first lady did test positive for COVID-19, found out at 1 o'clock this morning. And Mr. Biden may have been exposed as well. This has major implications in the waning days leading up to November 3rd. What do you think? Well, Bruce, the most important takeaway from this news, of course, is the seriousness of the public health situation. This is obviously a very infectious and very determined virus. At any given time, the president of the United States is the most protected person in the country. But obviously, all of the physical and medical security in the world can't stop COVID if people don't take the necessary precautions. And if anyone needed more proof as to why wearing masks and social distancing and frequent hand washing are so important, we now have that proof. I want to get to the mask issue in a second, but first I've got to ask you, does this have the potential to upend the president's all is well messaging on the pandemic? Well, I don't think there's any question about it. I mean, you know, look, I think this situation reinforces COVID as the top issue in the 2020 election. Throughout the campaign, including in Tuesday's debate, President Trump ridiculed and criticized Joe Biden for his frequent wearing of masks, for his cautious public engagement strategy, for his approach uh, to addressing COVID. Obviously, this news undermines those attacks and once again places the focus of the campaign on Donald Trump's handling of the worst public health emergency since 1918. So the president has traveled in recent days. He was here in Jacksonville not too long ago at his resort in Bedford for a private fundraiser in Duluth, Minnesota. He was on the debate stage with Joe Biden, as I mentioned. There's the risk a lot of his staffers have been exposed. A lot of people he's been in contact with at rallies. Many of those people did not wear masks. The mask issue you just brought up. Do Democrats have to tread lightly here? Well, Bruce, I don't think you'll see any glee or gloating because there's absolutely nothing funny about a virus that has infected 7 million Americans and, and very sadly killed 200,000 of those infected. But I do think, as I said before, that it underscores the uh, seriousness uh, of the COVID issue uh, in this campaign going forward. There's been two, you know, as we've talked about before, Bruce, every election is a choice. There have been two very different visions of how to handle a public health emergency uh, presented during this crisis, one from President Trump, one from Vice President Biden. This now again confirms COVID and the public health emergency as the most important issue uh, in this election and again shines a light on those differences between the candidates. So we've got a month to go until Election Day. What is the state of the contest right now and how does this major news affect it? Well, Bruce, as tumultuous as the election has been in the media, it has been remarkably stable in the polls, just as he has for several months. Uh, former Vice President Biden has about an eight to nine point lead in the national polls and a lead almost that big in key swing states like Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. In fact, he's leading or tied in several states the president absolutely has to have, like Florida, Georgia, Iowa and Ohio. With more people voting every day across the nation, the Trump campaign is simply running out of time to change the trajectory of the contest. And of course, now that President Trump and the First Lady and others are going to be off the campaign trail, maybe for as long as a couple of weeks while they're in quarantine, uh, that just freezes the state of the race and takes away some of that time that is so important to try and close the gap. Chris Hand, always appreciate your perspective. 736, Jen.